Hi guys, it's me Quinn, and as always, if you appreciate my content, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about a science fiction book that I read at the beginning of this year, Children of Time. Now I really do think that in the last 10 years or so, we really have entered a new golden age of science fiction. Now you've got James S. A. Corey with the Expanse series. You've got Six and Lowe's Three Body Problem series being originally published in 2008, but then republished in English in 2014. And then you've got Children of Time, which was published in 2015. And then honestly, a lot more. I mean, The Martian by Andy Weir was one of my favorites. But moving on from that, this book is very, very good. And reading it, it instantly became another modern favorite of mine. Now, this book is about a lot. It's about consciousness. It's about what is the self. It's about evolution. It's about social issues. It's about the struggle for the survival of humanity. It's about the hubris of humanity. It's about war. It's about cruelty. This book is about so much that I can't really discuss it all in one video. But I do want to talk about some specific aspects of the book that I really, really liked. So keep in mind, for those of you that have not read the book, there will be some spoilers in this video. So this book starts off at a point in mankind's history where we have the ability to terraform other worlds. Now, not everybody on Earth is okay with this. Some people feel like it's playing God. Some people don't. But there is ongoing conflict. Now, you have a scientist named Kern who is leading this project, and she intends to release a barrel of monkeys onto this newly terraformed planet, along with a virus that will speed up their evolutionary process. From the beginning, it's clear that Kern wants to become a god, and she literally thinks in the first chapter, this is the future. This is where mankind takes its next great step. This is where we become gods. So she intends to wait it out in sort of a cryogenic situation until the monkeys have evolved to the level where they're humanoid and intelligent. And then she'll go down to that world and she would be embraced by these humanoid monkeys as a god. Now, I won't spoil every detail of this, but of course the plan goes horribly wrong as it's pretty clear it's going to go from the beginning Adrian Tchaikovsky does nothing to indicate that this is going to go well. You pretty much know from the beginning. And the monkeys in the barrel end up perishing. But the virus itself does get down to this newly terraformed world, which has all sorts of other Earth animals on it. And that's where Portia the spider comes in. So this book is essentially about a man-made virus increasing the speed of the evolution of spiders and they slowly become sentient slowly build a civilization and slowly start communicating with kern who for the majority of the book believes these to be her monkeys and kern herself has her own situation going where she's melded with the computer system inside of the shuttle that she's been hibernating in so the line between kern's mind and the mind of whatever the ship's computer has become have blurred a lot and she's basically a lunatic. Now, over the hundreds and hundreds of years that Kern is hibernating while this spider civilization is building, humanity has fallen into a state of significant decline to where the civilization has been nearly eradicated. The last remnants of humanity are on a generational ship and it's not going very well for them. And it's interesting because you get to see the rise and decline of the culture and the society on this generational ship as various characters go in and out of hibernation decades at a time often. So at one point in time, things might be stable and peaceful. And at some other time, a dictator might have taken over the entire ship and like enslaved everyone. And so this first book constantly flips between what's up with the last remnants of humanity and what's going on with this building spider civilization. And as the book goes on and on, you're realizing that where this is leading to is that the last remnants of humanity will have to face off against Kern's spider civilization, which does get pretty advanced. And it was also very interesting to see how exactly that spider technology 
develops. It's a lot of biological technology. I particularly loved the idea of ants being used to build an organic computer. It was just endlessly fascinating and very, very intriguing. So apart from all the incredibly cool sci-fi ideas in this book, and I haven't even got to all of them, there's so much more, it's just a really engrossing story. It's very engaging, an absolute page turner because you just want to know how far does this go? How advanced will this spider civilization become? Because evolution doesn't necessarily have an endpoint. Species continually adapt to their environments, and as their environments change, they have to develop new adaptations, but evolution never ceases to continue. And the other really engrossing part of this book was to see the formation and the evolution of the extraordinarily complex social and societal structure of the spiders themselves. So, human behavior on a mass scale, I'm speaking in general, is informed by our biology. Because we are descended from primates, our society formed in a specific way. Now, because the society of arachnids in this book are descended from spiders, their society develops in a very specific way that's distinct from humanity. And actually, Kern has a very difficult time understanding them at all because though they have developed intelligence it's a different sort of intelligence to the intelligence of a human being and there's a lot of like reconciling that you have to do to be able to communicate effectively between two species with entirely separate evolutionary tracks spiders would not evolve intelligence and then immediately start thinking like humans and feeling like humans. They wouldn't become humanoid. They would still be spiders, but intelligent spiders with intelligent spider thoughts. So Children of Time was an absolute 10 out of 10 for me. I love this book, and I'm definitely gonna discuss it more in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas. Peace out.